some somebody's got the bagpipes and they're playing on shore here and they're really good they haven't pulled they haven't blew any notes or anything so just on this island back um i think west vancouver yacht club has an outstation here and yeah kind of neat this nice beautiful surrounding here and you hear the bagpipes in the background and gives the place a neat feel not sure if the mic can pick this up or not anyway we're getting up early in the morning so it's almost nine o'clock now and it's just about to get dark or at least the sun's gonna set so we're gonna sort of get a bit of an early night and uh probably check uh, check uh, the weather before dawn and uh i think it should hopefully calm down and we'll hopefully be uh, out of here by daybreak and start making our way north It's about 5 a.m. As you can see, water's nice and calm. It's been just completely calm all night, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it uh, yeah, not a breath of wind, no wave slapping, anything. Halba Bank out in the middle of the strait there, or the far side of the strait. Uh, sounds like it's about six to eight knots, so yeah, it should be pretty good. No updated wave heights at uh, Mary Island or entrance right now, but I think it's pretty good and. If it's that bad, we can always we can always change our course. But yeah, weather looks good this morning. We're we're prepping up right now and we're getting ready to go. So should be pretty good. Time to get Hunter up. He and Dick Dory to shore. We're just gonna prep the rest of the boat here, get everything going. We'll be on the move pretty soon. about five miles north of Gabriela Pass where we just outside of where we stayed last night and uh, yeah we're out of the strait here and um, it's looking pretty good so far uh, yeah as you can see conditions are perfect uh, still got a little bit of flood that we're moving with so that's good but um, otherwise uh, so far so good still supposed to be maybe a bit breezy over on the other side but you know not like it was last night or yesterday so Keep pushing on and see how we do. the street now we're just uh, just entering the Malaspina Street so uh, we're approaching southern end of Texada and uh, we're gonna kind of sneak alongside the inside of Texada um, instead of going Central Street or on the other side um, last year we were on that side we have this kind of running theory that if we stay close to the Texada side and especially if we predict relatively calm conditions that you don't get the influence of Jervis Inlet, especially right now we're on an ebb tide. Not much wind, so it probably isn't an issue anyway. But we're going to run that side of the strait, just see if it's any better. But uh, overall, really good, smooth conditions. Um, you know, it was rippled conditions all the way from Thrasher Rock to Malaspina here. And we're looking to probably be in desolation by about 3 p.m. And we've been running for about three hours so far, so I think we left around. 6 a.m. or something like that so but uh so far so good today everything's running nice knock on wood and um hopefully it continues to
good conditions on the Malaspina Strait. Yeah, so calm. We went down, we had a shower. You know, really nice when you can do that. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, you can really emphasize in, you know, a boat like this. And, uh, you know, pretty comfortable and pretty nice that you're able to actually have a shower while underway and, you know, feel nice and refreshed. And, uh, yeah, it looks like we've got about six hours and we should be up in uh, Desolation Sound, which that'll put us there probably about, by about 3.30 p.m. So uh, we might stop for fuel in, uh, in Westview just to top off. And other than that, it's looking like a pretty good day as long as the sea state stays fairly smooth. Uh, we'll find out soon enough. Malaspina Strait now and uh, there is a bit of a, a wind coming this way it's uh, blowing at probably about seven to eight knots but we're going about eight and a half so it's kind of balancing out it's uh, there's kind of no wind even though you can tell there's a little bit of sea movement going this way but um, you know we're not running too fast and we're making good time so uh, uh, yeah it's really nice and still uh, it's still really calm uh, we're going ahead and making lunch while we're cruising here. Have a bit of an early lunch since we've been up since about five. We're gonna stop in Westview and top off our fuel. So, but yeah, great day so far. Looking like a great transit. Nice riding up there. Anyone who has traveled the Malaspina Strait very much will tell you it can be a fickle passage. Sometimes it's okay, other times with steep waves and turbulent seas. These are unfamiliar waters to us and often you want to figure out how to predict the sea condition for a given area. For starters you have an ebb and flood tide and often the wind opposes the tide direction, but that only seems to be part of it. You also have a huge influx of water from Jervis Inlet on an ebb tide which may feed into this condition. One other thing we have experienced is steep swells generated from a southeasterly wind in the southern strait of Georgia after a gale or storm. These swells seem to consolidate and condense in the middle of the Malaspina Strait under the right conditions. We have also noticed rough sea state around an area called Sinclair Bank. This relatively shallow bank seems to add to the disorganized sea state in the area and is why we have been testing the waters on the Texada side. Not sure how correct all these theories are, but I suppose it's part of the adventure.
story. We just fueled up here in uh, Westview, just behind me. And uh, so from Sydney to get up here, it was almost 200 liters right on the nose. So uh, just interesting to note. And um, so that means going to destination, I don't know. We got probably another two, three hours here. So I could say probably around 250 liters it takes us to get from Sydney up to desolation in this boat. And we are running probably, I don't know, around eight knots most of the time, keeping the revs kind of low. But uh, anyway, so far so good. We got a little bit of northwesterlies coming up, coming in right now, uh, but it's still pretty gentle and pretty nice and there's no real waves or any seas building. So, so far so good as far as this truck coming north. Anyway, time to pull the last leg in for this trip and we'll be, we should be there in a couple hours. Tulin Passage through the Copeland Islands, just back behind me here. And uh, I think we're about three, four miles here from Sarah Point. We're definitely going to be uh, getting into desolation here probably in the next hour. So yeah, it should be pretty nice. And uh, yeah, it kind of cooled off a little bit. You know, not too much blue sky right now. Uh, you know, mostly overcast, but yeah, whatever. Uh, I think tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit the same way. and. Uh, then after that, we're supposed to have some pretty hot weather for the rest of the week. So anyway, should be pretty nice and uh, be nice to get some nice warm weather and start doing some swimming. So anyway, should be there in about an hour. Well, there's Sarah Point in the background here. You can't really see too much of the mountains, but uh, that's okay. Give it a day or so. I'm sure it'll come back. But at least our transit is done anyway, so that's great. We're, uh, let's see, we left yesterday at right around 1 p.m. And we're, let's see, I think it's about 4 p.m. the following day. So that's not too bad. We probably would have been up here a little earlier if we would have been able to cross the strait last night, but it's all right. We didn't really hit any waves. We had great conditions, so that's gonna be worth something. Anyway, we should be at Anchorage here and uh, I don't know, probably about 45 minutes. All right, we're just arriving in Squirrel Cove now. Not too sure where we're gonna anchor tonight, but uh, I'm sure it won't be too hard to find a spot in here. prepped up having a few uh, having a few refreshments and hunters off at shore with Dory again I was real tired from our I guess 5 a.m. start this morning so she's just laying down having a rest and I think she's gone to sleep but uh, otherwise yeah just prepping up dinner and uh, yeah it looks like it's gonna be a pretty nice evening tonight nice and calm and you know nice easy harbor you know can't really go wrong with Squirrel Harbor Especially when you start to just get here, you just want to drop the hook, not really think too hard about it, and just sit here and kind of unwind for for the night. Maybe we'll move tomorrow, maybe we won't, but it's a good go-to spot. It's when you get in Desolation, it's like three miles from Sarah Point, so good spot to start out. So anyway, I think we'll probably uh, have our dinner and probably get a relatively early night considering the, the transit today. And, um, oh, look at that. Looks like, looks like Hunter's on the way back here with Dory. And that's good, because his dinner's just about ready. Anyway, thanks for watching. Good night. And, uh, not too sure where we're going to anchor, but not too sure where we're, not too sure where we're going to anchor.